upstairs. Let's go, Sean. It's the weekend. Let's get a bit athletic here. Who's with Paula? Hello. Here we are, once again, on the bed, and today I'm with one of the rising stars in the world. It is, of course, rising, rising at this minute, Brandon Lee. How are you? Tired. Good morning. Good morning. Now, tell me a bit about your new film. Well, um, I'm playing a, a young art student who witnesses a murder, uh, gets... You know, I'm so... The, it's it's like a synopsis telling the synopsis of the film you know there's there's a lot of great action in the film i did the choreography for it i got to work with uh, people that i had been training with in the martial arts since i was 10 12 years old and the story basically it's a, a young art student who witnesses a murder uh, the people who committed the murder don't ever want to see me make it to the stand so they spend the rest of the film trying to put a bullet in my head and is it jolly violent it's jolly violent is it yes do you think that this film will appeal to the same people that went to see your father's films? Uh, they're probably considerably old now, but... Um... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I went to see Bruce Lee films. Well, so did I. <laughs> um, I, I don't... I, you know, the, the concept of trying to figure out who is going to go see a movie, I, I don't quite get it. Now, all your training, how... What exactly have you trained in? Um... Well, I, I went to film school. Um, well, I want to know about your Kung Fu. Oh. Um, my dad started training me in his art, which is called Jeet Kune Do, as soon as I could walk. Uh, after he passed away, I kept up my training with uh, the man who was his senior student at the time, Danny Inosanto. And so I have been training for most of my life. So you must be really, really, really good. Either that or I've just been practicing yeah, for just a really keep... long time. So could you kill somebody very easily? Um... No, not easily. Do you have to sort of, I suppose you have to avoid ever getting into fights. Do people try and pick on, pick on you because, when they know who you are? Not much anymore. Happen? It has happened. It has, has happened in a while, but it used to happen a lot. And what did you used to do? Get in a lot of stupid, pointless oh, fights. Oh, really? I was imagining you having to say, I was imagining you having to say sort of nobly, I can't fight you because yes. I might, yes. you know. Well. Um, do something terrible. Maybe in years to come I will gain that kind of wonderful control, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. To go back to your dad, how close were you with him? Very close. Did you do lots and lots of things together all the time? Well, you know, my, I, was, I was only eight and a half when my dad passed away, so we did a lot of things together. We just didn't have a lot of time to do them in. And do you remember him very well? Yes, I do. So that's quite unusual, isn't it? Lots of people, when their parents die young, they, um, they kind of block it all off and forget loads. I, you know, it's kind of an involved conversation, but I did, I did for a while. There was a period of time where I, I didn't think about it much. But as I got older, it kind of mm. came back. I don't know. At the moment, you're doing the, the action films. What kind of things do you want to do in the future? Well, I don't think I'll get the chance to stop doing action films completely anytime soon. Um, but I'd like to be able to kind of flip-flop back and forth, you know, do something that's a little more, I don't know, an independent film, something that's uh, uh, not quite so mainstream and, and doesn't have to... If there's this huge machine that revolves around a film like this, you know, the marketing of it and the, the publicity that goes along with it, and it's all right, but it's it's... It's not what I. It's not the only thing I'd like to be doing for the rest of my life. Are you going to be a sex symbol as well as a sort of boy's idol? A boy's idol? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That's not not my problem well, Kung, right now. Kung Fu films and action films they are sort of boys' films, aren't they? <laughs> Teenage boys always come out and run up Edgware Road, going. Yeah, exactly. That's the mark. They? That's the mark you of know, a mark of a good. My husband does that. It's the mark of a good martial arts film. People should come out, yeah, you know, punching the air. Yeah, yeah, exactly, seriously. exactly. Now I hear you. You're fantastically fit, and I've heard about your stomach. Can I see your stomach? Because we do actually have now the big breakfast competition for the nicest stomach. <laughs> what do I win? What do you win? We haven't decided on that. <laughs> I'm sure with our crew, who uh, knows you'll have what to could tell happen. Me about the prize later or oh, something. Oh God. Run a clip. Don't we have a clip of my stomach? What? Something? Desperately trying to get out of showing your stomach. Why? Mm -hmm. What have you eaten this morning? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's the tattoo that I just got, and I, I really can't... Have you can't seriously just got a tattoo? No, I haven't. Are you very romantic? Um, I think so. What sort of romantic things do you do? What sort of romantic things do I do? Um, 
while you ponder this question, and we'll quickly go over to our regular spot, which is, of course, the heart-rending, stomach-tugging Cupid's arrow. That was very sweet, wasn't it? Torrid, absolutely torrid. Did you think of anything romantic that you do? You know, it all seems so personal. I can't think of anything... Uh... Oh, stop being such a soppy date. <laughs> Well, I remember one time we had, there's an area uh, out uh, in the desert outside of Los Angeles, and so it's about a two-hour drive out, and I drove out there in the very early morning, told my girlfriend I was going, I don't know, do something, work out at the gym, and set up a tent, you know, and got it all set up with all the, the, the champagne and the candles and everything, and then drove back and picked her up and after she got off work and drove her out there, and we got out there, and there was this tent all set up, and so she That's thought... That's romantic. Well, it was kind of romantic. That's pretty good. Yeah. Especially on the spur of the moment, that's fantastically romantic. Mm. Now to something totally unromantic. When you're doing your films oh. and you do all the kicking and stuff, do they add all the slappy noises afterwards? Except for the times when I make a mistake, yes. <laughs> Is it very complicated? Uh, it's completely beyond me, but I, I imagine... it's You go into a big mixing studio and uh, I think that they just have you know, already catalogued different hit effects. And then they, they put them all in, and the director said, I'd like a little more bass on this one, a little more treble on that but one. But how do they do? And it's, it, they put together six or seven different sounds, I think. You know, like someone breaking a two-by-four, someone hitting a side of beef, uh, someone like dropping a watermelon off a ten-story building. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all the things that you'll be doing. What would be home. fun is to be the people who go out and collect these sounds. Now, that would be kind of interesting. Yeah, it must be. It's such a weird job. Yeah, yeah. And then when you do something, they have to sort of think, hey, that's a watermelon. Yeah. <laughs> that's a real, that's a beef sound there. Yeah. Do a few moves. Do just, just a, mm. just a bit. Mm. Do a little bit. Huh? Do a little bit. No, no, I, what do you want? Oh, honestly, you are such a bad date. <laughs> you just won't show me your stomach. I bet you won't sing for me afterwards either. Oh, no, that you don't ever want to hear or see or anything. Brandon, it was lovely to talk to you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And, um, darling. And now we're going to have a question. How does Brandon Lee get the gun off the bad guy? And remember, don't phone, it's just for fun.